panel of CISOs. Uh, my name is Sean Webner. I'm Chief Strategy Officer at ESOS. And on this panel, we're going to be discussing different uh, the advantage of platforms, uh, or rather threat, ad threat actors taking advantage of platforms. Um, and what we can do about it, the moderator is David Spark, producer of the CISO series. Uh, panelists are Gerald Bischeld, the CISO at Log Me In, and Anthony Johnson, a managing partner at Delve Risk. Um, and I'll hand it off uh, to David to handle the, uh, the broader intros there, but uh, take it away, David. Uh, thank you very much, Sean. And by the way, I don't have broader intros. Those are my introduction. But I have, I can tell you that both of these guys are very, very bright gentlemen, and they know a lot uh, about this uh, issue of threats, which is what we're going to talk about. And given, and uh, we find that we, every time we have a conversation now, we have to always reference a thing that is on, is what we're all living in right now, which is our work at home situation in the remote workforce, which I know I don't need to repeat over and over again, but it feels like it's the qualifier we always have to throw out. So we're going to put that on the forefront, and I'm going to just begin the conversation uh, about threats, talking about where we are today. What is the situation today with APTs? If you don't know what that acronym stands for, it's Advanced Persistent Threats. Um, and what... What are let's just start with where we are today. So I'm going to start with you, Jerry. Uh, what is the status today? So we're we're obviously seeing uh, APT activity continuing, just as it were uh, in the many many months before. Um, the uh, what what we are monitoring closely is the t uh, kind of campaigns and the kind of activities that are now being spun around the um, the, the latest uh, latest uh, um, COVID scare. Um, we've seen uh, many phishing campaigns. We've seen uh, the uh, inf now infamous uh, Corona map uh, being pushed out as well. Um, and uh, I would say the entire um, slew of threat actors, from hobbyists to uh, uh, to nation state uh, adversaries, are starting to take uh, uh, advantage of um, the readiness of uh, a, a scared population to click things. So um, this is. Let, this let is... me can I, let me just pause you there for a second, sure. Jerry. This <clears throat> just in general. This is a common technique <clears throat> for kind of all for all fishing, for that matter, is whatever, and it could go on a, on a sort of a various things. Is if it's top of mind, so it could be something positive, top of mind, like hey, the World Cup is happening or the Olympics is happening, or it could be something very negative that that is top of mind, or just a a recurring thing like you're t it's tax time, and you know, click here so you don't lose all your money, kind of a thing. You know, I, who knows what. Uh, I'm sure it's a little more clever than that, but uh, this is this is more unusual in that it's worldwide, and we are all dealing with it at a hundred percent. Although you know things like the Olympics, we're all kind of dealing with, it, although not at a negative level. Although people can ignore the Olympics. Um, so, what mass is there anything that makes this different? Just given the sort of the the grandeur and the volume of this. I think you had it hit it on the, uh, the the nail on the head. It's like it's the grandeur, the volume, the urgency, and the uh, the panic that is associated with that that we usually do not see with a, a funny meme that uh, uh, that is used to bring this around or mm -hmm. some uh, some 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 World Cup or uh, or whatever. Uh, I think what's also relevant in this context is to uh, to note that uh, the the kind of distractions that uh, scalability, uh, capacity planning, and uh, et cetera are are causing those, uh, the strains that they, those are causing on companies. Uh, lend themselves to uh, um, not monitor sec security quite so closely. So obviously, we're making do now do uh, do part in making sure that we're not falling for that trap. Yeah, I, I, one thing to to add on to there is you know sure. any aspect that that really triggers um, or is driven by a sense of urgency of hey we have to do this now or a direct impact or you have to do this now or you know mm -hmm. the CFO is going to fire you specifically and you've never talked to the CFO. Um, and so while the, you, you have this stuff going on now with the coronavirus where you're ha having threat actors leveraging that, you can quickly imagine that today there's going to be a whole new set of threats coming out associated with this massive spending bill in the U.S. Helping small businesses. Click here, do this. It's going to be great for you. And all of a sudden people are realizing that, wait a minute, that was not a, a link to the SBA. That is not a link to, for me to understand this thing. And all of a sudden... I'm dealing with rampant where, you know, ransomware across my ecosystem 
that's going to hit those same small business owners that, 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 you know, this bill is intended to help. So it's things like that are going to be really, really impactful. Let's actually let people do make human mistakes. So, and, 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 and by the way, it's interesting. We, we had a situation where, uh, uh, I was recording one of my podcasts and literally just before the moment I was about to hit the record and I was doing it in person. It was at, uh, someone at the, I was with the CISO of Atlassian and, and my co-host, Mike Johnson, both CISOs. And in just a moment before I hit record, I get a call from my sister, very panicked that she fell in the trap for somebody's uh, phishing scheme. And I said, well, good, good news. I've got two experts here and they provided some good advice. And the, the number one advice I said is contact your help desk right now. Let them know this has happened. And... The other thing is go change your, all your major passwords right now, like your email and all your major social networks. So uh, that I think is probably good advice. Is there some other good advice for the people out there that like who are watching this that may make a stupid mistake because we're all moving fast and we got our kids that are distracting us, whatnot. If a mistake like this happens, what is your advice, Anthony? Yeah, well, it's going to depend on whether it's on the corporate system or the personal system, right? True. Um, and, and, and one of the things that's really important right now is there are a lot of enterprises who were not prepared for this level of remote work. And so they actually have their staff not VPNing in all the time or not having persistent access. So things like network monitoring or help desks are being completely over flooded. Um, so I think that it's important for security teams to have and should be providing this type of guidance. We, we talked a little bit before we kicked off about education and awareness, right? Like those types of guidance pieces ahead of time are really important. Um, for the individual user at home, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's going to be a, a hunt and peck of like, hey, you know, resetting those passwords, you fundamentally. Right, but, but, you know. but I, think, I, I think maybe the reassurance and Jerry, and tell me if this is, you, you had this happen either in your office or with your clients for that matter. If they make a mistake, because people are fallible, they make mistakes, some level of reassurance of just let us know rather than hiding it and you will not get in trouble kind of a thing. Like, how do you create that reassurance, Jerry? I think that reassurance absolutely needs to be created. Uh, 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 right. It has to be created through the means of uh, good security education, security awareness training across the board. And that, that's not something you can do overnight. So if you, if you haven't started on creating a security awareness program and uh, some, some training that goes beyond clicking through 15 uh, videos and then calling it a day, if you haven't done that, then uh, now's the time to, to really reassess where you are and uh, drive things forward. What you were saying before, it's like changing passwords, making sure uh, maybe use a password manager. It's like, it's always a good idea. Yes. <laughs> um, so just have to say that. By the, by the way, I will tell you the top <laughs> two security tips that we get on our show that people say, it's, it's, there's two. Get a password manager, MFA, one and yep. two. And yep. those bounce between like which one's one and two, but they're always one and two. Absolutely. <laughs> Actually, number three, I would add to is patch your stuff. It's like, I've, okay. it's like, I don't know how many times I've seen people at home sitting on a, on a router that they bought in 2011. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. They figured out once in 2012, it's like, how can I patch this thing? And then ever since it's been sitting around, it's part of a botnet. It's been spewing DNS hijacking. It's like, I mean, it, it's insane what's uh, sometimes going on there. So make sure you're running on the latest and greatest uh, hardware that, that actually is patched properly. Mm -hmm. So David, David, go ahead, Anthony. You mentioned, you know, how do you get the trust piece and how do you make sure people know what to do? Um, and I'll give you a story. When I was a CISO over at GE uh, Treasury, my wife actually called me and said, hey, um, I think I gave my credit, the credit card number to somebody. And I'm like, wait a minute. And so I talked to her and I'm like, okay, I'm running the program for General Electric, the cyber program for General Electric Treasury. Like you can't do this, <laughs> like yeah, like and so we had to have a conversation. I, I I will tell you, my mom has also made a mistake. Like the people that you love, that you think that you know are smart, make mistakes. So it happens. Exactly, <laughs> and, and then, but that's when I realized I was like, wow, I actually haven't had any sort of awareness training with my wife. Right, yeah. I, we've never talked about good cyber practices for her, and so you know we quickly did that, and now she's you know on a password manager, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but but going back to to um, the the comment, it's important to have that planning and thinking about that awareness early because you have to have the trust. Otherwise, your users are going to be scared. They are going to say, you know what, I'm just going to turn it off. That didn't happen, um, and then you know the security team finds out that it did happen because something has moved laterally across the network. You know, totally agree. The 
Go ahead. I'm sorry, Jerry. I, th I, I totally agree. It's, I think this is one of the things I really cannot overemphasize uh, when, when I'm talking to folks. It's like it's really about people, process, technology in that order. Because at the end of the day, it's like if you, you're, we, if, it doesn't matter how big a security team you have. Uh, it's like if, if you cannot really enlist uh, the, the help of all the users that are on your networks or that you're responsible for in this kind of uh, defense against APTs, against uh, nuisance threats or whatever it is, it's like you will always lose. So it's like focusing on that at the home, at the, at the company, it's like wherever you are. I think that is really the most critical thing that we can do. So actually tagging on to that, and this is something that Mike Johnson had said, and in a bizarre twist, it is, I'm going to throw this out as a potential and tell me if you agree or disagree, that this situation we're all in where everyone has had to work at home may actually be a boon for awareness. Because one of the things that Mike has noticed is that whenever he makes security personal to people's personal issues, then they start to then understand how it affects a company because then it, it concerns them. And then he knows when he's doing the right thing is when his employees just start coming to him asking questions about their own personal cybersecurity. So do you think this could conceivably be a boon for cyber awareness, what we're all dealing with right now, Jerry? I would say it has an opportunity for people at least to rethink this. Because I mean, like I, like I said in the beginning, that like we see so many uh, COVID-19 themed uh, threats going on right now. It's going through the mainstream media news. Everybody's heard about some, something happening along those lines. Mm -hmm. And as like, as, as we say, even bad news is, uh, is, is, is news. So it's like, as long as we have some awareness of pointing to right. this, people will start to pay attention. So yeah, I would, I would agree with Mike on that one. It's like that, that this, is, this is going the right direction. Let what do you think? Add, do you think this will be a boon? Uh, so let me add a little bit of a counterpoint. I think that it might spike. It might bump a little bit. Um, and, and here's why. I, I think that you'll see when, when users are in a more of a corporate environment, right, when, when they get to socialize, there are, there are certain behaviors that are just not going to be normalized or accepted, like putting passwords on screens and doing these types of things. Because there's a, you know, it's, it, it's in the company. People are going to give you, give you a hard time when they see that. Your security team is walking by, whatever it is. Right. In, in the privacy of home, you might be like, users are more aware. And then six months, take a picture of somebody's computer monitor screen, right? Like that could be very, <laughs> very interesting to be like, well... Yeah, they kind of regressed. Well, but no, but you know, it's interesting. We talked about like my mom has has a literally a notepad right on her desk that has all her username and password. But you know, people's access to that pretty much limited. Like no fair. one's because it's in her home. So, so you know, we talked about like that's actually a pretty secure environment. You know, that it's, it's just there and really nobody has access to that. Yeah, that, 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 that's an interesting piece, especially when you think about it, like ATP. So, you know, um, the, the, the notion of like, well, passwords on stickies is bad in, at, in the company, but it's safe at home because nobody's because, well, nobody else has access. Yeah, Maybe. nobody's safe. <laughs> Otherwise, to totally admit, it's like the, uh, I definitely have the, um, the, the password, the master password for my password manager on a sticky in our safe. Because guess what? It's like, how many people are going to go there? My wife. And actually, if she, she may actually need it. So from that perspective. Oh, but it's I actually also in a safe. So you do have a level of security. <laughs> yeah, just that. a tad. You know, just a tad. <laughs> It's not in a drawer. <laughs> no, no, it's not. But actually, uh, bringing it back to what uh, Anthony was saying before, it's like uh, this this being a spike and then a leveling off. I agree with this. It's like because I think there are two basic motivators that uh, motivate people to to think about or change behaviors. One is fear, and the other is humor, right? And fear is always something. An you, opportunity. You, Throw it. Fear, humor, yeah, opportunity. F f fair. Fear, though, really is like this, like, oh, I got to do something really right now. And it wanes off pretty quickly because people get to, yeah, whatever. It's like uh, uh, this, it, it wears off. If you can cre create a program that is driven by humor or maybe also opportunity, I agree with that, that does take a lot longer to really for people to act upon because there's, there's not that urgency and drive, mm -hmm. but it's something that makes it sticky over time. So I think it's like com combining this a little bit of fear with uh, with a little bit of humor and uh, uh, and other opportunities to engage. It, that's the right security program. I will throw out a fourth one, and, and this is a story from Yaron Levy, who is the CISO of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Kansas City. They ran a um, a, a security awareness uh, you know test, essentially a phishing test against their own employees. They ran a whole series of them. The employees did very well. You know, only like you know. The 95% success rate was, you know, really, really high. And then someone came up with the creative idea of, let's send one more phishing test about a lost puppy in the parking lot. Everyone blew it. 
Whoa. So it's 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 amazing the creativity, and this is where the other thing is. The uh, I'm thinking the way I envision what's happening with fishing now. There's going to be more shots on goal, and even yeah. though people are going to be good about blocking these, there's just going to be a lot more shots on goal, and there's going to be a lot more creativity, and there'll be a lot more maybe puppies in the parking lot type fishing emails yeah. that are out there. Are are we just dealing with, and, and, and maybe we could just talk about APTs in general. Are we dealing with more shots on goal right now, or is it you know situation normal? Like it's the same kind of insanity we always see. I, I think that when, it, when we come to those, you know, very advanced persistent threat actors, like we, we do have to draw the distinction. Um, there's going to be this big aspect of commodity threat actors, right? Mm -hmm. People who are just saying, hey, it's a good opportunity. We're going to we're going to we're going to throw these right. types of things They're out. They're not there. spearfishing. Yeah. But the, these advanced threat actors, like they have an objective, right? And, right. and, and they're getting into environment. Um, and they're not going to be the, the the big loud bang, um, and that's right. where you know these advanced programs should be looking at what what are we doing about it and how are we thinking about it. And mm -hmm. this is kind of the process and, and, and a little bit of a concern for operation centers that are fully you know fully remote now, and, and because processes break down when people aren't you know socially tied together in in, in that outcome. Um, and so, you know, there's a great book, The Checklist Manifesto. I love that book. And it, I, it's, I have heard that many times. Yeah. Right. And so, like, when you look at operations, how that works, but when you have a distributed workforce dealing with a really persistent threat actor that's really, really advanced, things break down. And so I think there's a risk that we have to look at, at separating that from the commodities right. uh, of, 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 you know, fishing attacks. I would agree with that. It's like, uh, particularly uh, looking, looking at the topic of a APTs, it's like for, for a true truly highly advanced uh, nation state level a, uh, APT actor using using the, uh, the whole uh, COVID situation right now is just one of the many things that they're going to be deploying in order to uh, to pop networks or, or uh, obtain their objectives. So uh, I think from, from from looking at those guys, they yeah, sure, it's like they get some more opportunities, a couple more shots on target. But uh, in general, I think the, uh, the the overall risk stemming from them is not necessarily different. They have their, they have their targets, they have what they want to do. The commodity ones, the uh, uh, the ones that that really can be exploited quickly, that that, that have a much better time right now. What, 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 let me add this last this piece here. I actually would would go so far as to say that the 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 increased volume associated with COVID, with with all these phishing attacks, of how we're kind of seeing consumers being hit, it actually gives a lot more um, noise for the the true signal to kind of go deeper into. For those advanced threat actors to get, you know, not to be un, uh, be really be under the radar, which is why it's important to have advanced programs that are looking for that true signal, um, because they can just be like, listen, there's so much craziness here, no one's going to pay attention to this really low and slow thing that looks like uh, just a production challenge on VPN access, maybe. Agreed. Yeah, like Agreed. maybe. Yeah, that's interesting. You like the the ones are going to succeed who do not put the COVID-19 threat. And by the way, you mentioned something when we were, you know, yesterday when we were chatting about uh, blocking certain emails. Anthony, can you explain that? And has that created any sort of value there? Yeah, so uh, so for a number of clients, what we, we, you know, provided guidance on and just continue to talk through them or with them about is saying, hey, is there any reason why your company would get an inbound from outside of the company about COVID-19? No, like it, it, really that's not gonna happen. So just turn it off, kill it at the gateway. You know, if it's in a header, if it's in a subject, it should not be getting to the end users because a as, as con on the consumer side, we're getting a ton of email about, hey, this is what um, you know my coffee mug company is doing about COVID nineteen. So coming to buy coffee mugs, right? Um, that is not relevant on on the, on the business context, and so those those companies really should just take the you know kind of a binary uh, approach and just turn it off uh, if it's not part of business. And, and, and is there any sort of have you seen anything positive about that happening? You know, as compared to the ones who haven't. I mean, less volume. Is there anything? Yeah, yeah. There's, the, the volume just stops, right? Because because they're they're piping it out. They're sending it over to the security team. They're able to analyze um, the, the, the 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 TTPs in there. Um, so, and then so just like they're not even looking at it. It's it's yeah. not even on their radar. It's, gone. it's just going to the security teams, right? So they, it, it, it goes in, gets analyzed, and then they can make a decision on, hey, was it malicious or not? Oh, okay. Oh, so but they are pa are they then passing them through or no? Well, so the, the mail is, is being yeah. killed at the edge, so it's not being delivered to the end users, but then copies are being sent to the SOC for, to, for analysis. To analyze, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, so what the, that was going to get into my next question about 
what is the stock now, A, because you're remote, and what are they looking for that's different? I'll throw this to you, Jerry. Uh, how is the SOC team changing now? SOC team is uh, obviously uh, all remote at this point in time. Right, uh, which, obviously, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, uh, that just comes with the territory uh, where we are. But at the same time, it's not really, for us, it's really not been that much of a, a huge difference. I mean, we are a remote com a working company. We support mm -hmm. this uh, with, with our own products. And we've been practicing this on an ongoing basis. I think the, the key element there is like what a lot of people have been talking about is business continuity planning, business continuity uh, exercising around that. Having done uh, some of that uh, beforehand, uh, before we, ha we, we were forced to go into uh, all remote, made it the transition for us relatively easy is it always perfect no it's like we have uh, last mile kind of concerns we have some sometimes uh, uh, gateway instabilities but at the same time um having having for formulated a, stra a strategy around zero trust access for most critical kind of uh, services for the SOC team and for for the sales team for everybody else uh, involved and having the ability to uh, to go uh, essentially on the turn of a dime to a, a full remote kind of work environment has allowed us to drive things. The one challenge that I would say uh, uh, that that people should not lose uh, out of focus because it's 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 something that will creep up on us slowly. We have a lot of uh, uh, young analysts, um, sometimes with a family, sometimes uh, all by themselves, sitting at home during the day, at night, totally socially isolated from the rest of the world except for a screen and uh, uh, talking to someone occasionally. That's not a good situation. So it's yeah. like looking at the psychological uh, health of the SOC team in particular, who have to be at the top of their game right now, uh, but also the uh, all the employees, obviously, as well. I think that's one of the key concerns that I'm having right now. Oh, wow. So, I mean, this intro, this, this is not in the milieu of what we were going to talk about, but this is, let's let's just touch upon this a few minutes. Because, uh, by the way, we see a lot of advice about this in general, but is there anything unique into, like, the way you just described, Jerry, that you have to support them. Is it, is it as simple as just sending a private message going like, hey, tell me how you're doing, what, what's going on right now? We're trying to do a couple of things. So we're, we're having uh, like virtual water cooler discussions. I'm, yeah. I'm having kind of like my office hours uh, in the morning and at night uh, we're doing with, the, with some, of the, uh, some of the SOC team or some of the, some of the other groups themselves, they have virtual beer events, they have uh, virtual coffee events or, or, or stuff like that. Which, which really helps to uh, still maintain a level of camaraderie despite being uh, physically separated from each other. It's mm -hmm. not quite the same. It, it has some novelty right now. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it'll wear off. But again, it's like if you add some gamification uh, in terms of like who gains or loses the most weight or as like who can type who the fastest. Who gains loses the most weight. <laughs> right? I mean, it's like you do stuff like that. It's like it keep, keeps things somewhat entertaining. And I think that is the key element right now in order to make sure that people are not spinning their heads, going panicking about what's going on in the world and at the same time being isolated from everybody else. I'll tell you, you know, I joined a water cooler just yesterday, but I, I literally could only focus for 15 minutes because my six-year-old came in and then I had to deal with something. So like I could only participate and i felt bad but i gotta assume that's gonna just it's a reality it's just oh i've happen. been i've been running in and out it's like i've been uh, i've been yeah. having breakfast while i was doing it because uh yeah. that time was there it's like who cares it's like just partake in in people's in what lives you can and can partake in. Yeah. and I'll, I'll throw yeah. another in just to throw out a creative idea because it's something that i saw that my wife's uh team did uh they had again one of the water coolers and everybody put on a stupid hat of some sort so literally you saw all these images <laughs> with people in the whatever silly hat they had Anthony, are you seeing something similar as well in terms of uh, dealing with, you know, just people's sort of that isolation emotions after. and the isolation? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. so actually we, we have one client, um, he carves out the morning and he actually sits on Zoom, literally just has an open Zoom and then any one of his team members can just hop in. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it, it's his view, his opportunity of having a virtual just walk in, you know, I have an open, right. open doors here. Um, and what was funny is when we were talking through that and he was, he was explaining it, um, I was like, do people join? And he's like, yeah, people just pop in just to say hi. And, you know, they, 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 they're craving some sort of, 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 of interaction. Um, and right. the reason why, one of the things that I, I thought was really good that, that Gerald mentioned is, is the, the aspect that when you have junior analysts, not only are they feeling the social isolation, but in, when they sit in a sock, part of the value of a sock is they can swivel chair to someone who's more senior and ask a question, Right. And not every organization really has great collaboration tools. So, and if they aren't, if they don't have great collaboration tools, they aren't using like Slack or Teams, it's not integrated into their DNA of how they communicate. You have analysts who are like, is it worth me emailing my senior 
or do I just make the call? Mm -hmm. And there's a series of, you know, just make the bad call perhaps that organizations need to be aware of. So they need to think about how they get tighter collaboration um, for those types of uh, situations. All right. We have how much time we got left? We've got, oh, geez, only four minutes left. Uh, okay. So I want everyone to know who's listening to this right now that immediately after this, we have, I guess we have our, our office hours where we're going to be fully engaging with, with uh, all of you. So please, uh, if you've got questions, you've got comments, I would love it also like what we just discussed, any brainstorming ideas of types of threats you're seeing, how you're dealing with the team, because, you know, what I realize is you can come up with one great idea. It ain't going to last forever. <laughs> you know, like I think if, if everyone comes up with one great idea and we all trade them around, we'll all have enough great ideas to keep the group entertained, to deal with APT, things like that. So it would be a great opportunity to share all these kinds of ideas. Let's do that. All right. With just the last few minutes um, we got left, let's, let's just close this out. Jerry, I'll just ask, what is top of mind right now for the next month to how you're going to deal with your team and what you're going to look for differently. I'll start with you, Jerry. Sure. So it's like a, a definite uh, top of mind is like keeping keeping systems alive. I mean, we run go to meeting, we run uh, LastPass. Those are uh, right now really tools that are super important for our customers to to maintain this kind of uh, online collaboration. So it's like making doing everything in our uh, uh, in our ability to support the uh, tech ops teams, the operational teams, and uh, keeping stuff running. And that means much much heightened awareness around what's going on in the production side with regards to security threats. So true 24 seven monitoring with like uh, some some additional folks on on uh, on staff just so that we could uh, don't uh, miss anything uh, true monitoring of the remote workforce um, again it's like social isolation sometimes breeds uh, interesting things and if uh, you see uh, uh, cheat engines or cheat cheat generators uh, popping up on, on corporate laptops and then suddenly pulling in trojan ho uh, horses or another malware uh, that's something to really keep an eye on so it's like making sure that those kind of remote devices you have are properly monitored as well and don't spread spread further stuff around. Uh, and uh, uh, beyond that, it's like uh, just making sure that we keep our customers informed in terms of what's going on. So a high degree of transparency in terms of what the status of the system is, what we're seeing, what they can do. Those are the, uh, I would say, the three things that uh, we have to focus on most right now. Awesome. And uh, Anthony. Yeah, so um, I, I'll, as opposed to like the hardcore technical pieces, I think that, um, let me just kind of lead on to like more personal piece here. Um, I think that one of the, the most important thing that's, that teams can do now um, is actually make sure they don't stifle the, cre the, the creativity of, of their teams. Um, you know, individuals are working remote and they're gonna see things in a new light. Um, they're gonna see things, think about problems a little bit differently and they're gonna come up with solutions. And if, this, if the leadership just squashes that and says, no, that's not the way we do it, then they're actually a continuing to like, you know, beat up that, 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 that sense of value of, the, of that remote worker, but also they're missing an opportunity of true innovation. There's going to be a lot of really great opportunities to innovate. Um, so I think the organizations that maximize on that, that's probably the biggest thing I, I, would, I would say. And I will close by saying what, let me throw out to that is, and I say this, I do a series of hacking video chats. And one of the things I say is I love bad ideas for this reason is great ideas come often from bad ideas. And I, and I say, please feel totally. free to be silly, creative, go out on a limb, come up with a bad idea because it's possible just because you're thinking differently, it will someone will take a nugget from that and run with it in a different direction. Exactly. 